We're on 14.5% growth for this year. 19 apprentices and we only have two salons, so it's, it's pretty full on. We're not going to get the same apprentices of what we had 15 years ago. It's different. Get over it. If you're a salon owner, take responsibility. I just had a senior resign yesterday. It's time to move on. Stop thinking and pairing the apprentices and the younger generation that you had maybe five, 10, even 15 years ago to this generation of stylists and therapists because the times have changed and this generation and thus the apprentices that we have now, they have changed also. But it doesn't have to be a bad thing. You just need to get with the times. Apprentices are the future of this industry and your business and your salon will never grow if you don't have new, excited, future stylists and therapists in the making walking through your door ready to be trained. In fact, apprentices are so important, it's why this salon owner has 19 of them right now. That's a third of her team. So I'm excited to have Charlene from Circles of Hair. She's in Perth, Australia. We're going to chat today about everything from TikTok to team leaving and, of course, why you need modern apprentices. But really quick, before we started, I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by the Salon Mastery Program. The Salon Mastery Program helps salon owners break through the 500k mark a year and become a million dollar business. You'll learn the strategies how to grow your salon to become a successful and profitable business without the stress and the overwhelm. No more 60 hour weeks. All right, let's get into this episode why you need modern apprentices. Charlene, thank you so much for joining me on the Salon Owners Collective podcast. Very pleased to have you here. Thank you so much. Why don't we start with, who are you, Charlene? Where are you in the world? What do you do? How did you get there? Okay, well, I've been a salon owner since I was 23, and now I am in my 50s. I bought my first salon in... um, when I was 23, I don't know the exact year, but I did end up buying um, Circles of Subiaco in 1995. And I started um, when it was pretty tough because I really had no idea on how to run a business. But 30 years on having Circles of Hair, I have now two locations, 52 team members across both locations. And yeah, it's been, you know, a whirlwind and I'm glad that I'm in my 50s and set up really good procedures and structures and now I'm um, enjoying what the industry um, has got you given me and, you know, it's a great lifestyle. I love that. That's really, really great. Um, All right, well, one of the things that inspired me to catch up with you, Charlene, is we saw a TikTok of yours talking about apprentices and what I've noticed of recent times with cost of living kind of on the back of uh, COVID and the cost, these things are all changing. And there's been a shift where people are a little bit more fearful to take on apprentices or double thinking it, your time investment in training, um, starting from scratch, waiting. The assumption is we have to wait four years to get a return on our investment. And you have 19 of them. So I was like, Charlene's got something to share. There's there's some little secret sauce going on there. So what I would love to do is I would love to kind of dig into why do you choose to build your business on the back of apprentices? And then we can talk a little bit later, like how do you deal with 19 of them? Golly gosh. Yeah. Okay. Look, um, apprentices are always been, they're, they're the future of our industry. Now, if we don't put apprentices on, you know, God knows where we're going to be in 20 years' time. So, you know, I I definitely find that they're a big part of definitely our brand and our culture, and we absolutely love training the apprentices. But not only that, you know, they 
if if you if your training is right, they will bring in the money. So it's up to if you've got a really strong training structure, they will definitely um get, you know bring in that revenue for you and it won't take too long even though we're very uh, structured in our training but yeah 19 apprentices and we only have two salons so it's it's pretty full-on so when we we set up we set ourselves up for success so when a senior leaves we know that we can push all our apprentices up because you know let let's say you know you know obviously having such a, a big Team, mem- team members, you know, there's, there's people always coming and going and we have a, a, a lot of teams that have been with us for, you know, 20 plus years. But, you know, there, there is a lot of, I mean, just like yesterday, I had uh, one of my seniors g- gave notice and, you know, I wasn't in that panic stage and I wasn't in that, oh, my God, I am just going, what the hell am I going to do? I have to start. We've already set this up because we've got so many apprentices that, when our seniors move, that's when all our apprentices move. So my apprentices know that when a senior leaves, it's good for them and they all move up the way, you know. So it's a win-win situation. So uh, myself as a salon owner, I'm never in that desperation stage where a lot of salon owners are because they just don't recruit enough apprentices. Yeah. Well, they're not at that stage, you know. My experience is we don't recruit, recruit fast uh, early enough and we do it when we're in the oh my God stage and actually we're not future-proofing. It's like we keep stock on shelf so we don't run out of stock but we don't keep our staff on stock and we don't have them on the shelf waiting to go. Um, and to your point of having a really strong training program. So I noticed that you have basically a third of your team are apprentices, 19 to 52 is a third. Um, that's quite a heavy load. I know when I had my salon, our goal was to have them income generating in six months. What is your philosophy around, like, they'll all be at different levels, I'm sure. Like, what's the journey to get them income generating? Well, they always start in Australia. We always start the MOT at Cert 2, which is just a one year. And then we start them as a first-year apprentice in their Cert 3 because it gives us 12 months to really see how they are in the salon, if they fit fit our culture and as well as you know how much money we are spending on our apprentices and then when we feel that they're definitely the right fit and they've given us 12 months of their cert two and they are dedicated then we put them on and then you know we start really heavily investing in these guys and we also do makeup so I do offer a big handful of my apprentices to do a makeup course which we I pay for and then they start generating the um, makeup and styling and then we start really booking them up with makeup and styling and then really pushing them up and then having that uh, strong consultation on um, styling and blow drying and you know Saturdays that they're totally booked out with hair and makeup Okay, I love that because you're getting all of that interpersonal uh, relationship and consultation to your point, you know, all of that stuff done before they can, you know, hold a pair of scissors and cut something wrong. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) That feels really safe. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, it's really important. And then they love it as well because, you know, they've just had 12 months of doing a cert too. They're ready to go on the floor. They're hungry for it. And obviously they have to get ticked off with all their blow drying and styling skills. And then once they're ticked off, then they start doing clients and, and go from there. And then they get into your semi-permanent colours and, and go up the rank from there. But at least they are doing um, the clients at, at a younger, you know, at a younger, you know, in their mid-first year going into their second year. They're very, very competent in that that area. And, and you know, we're a big styling and makeup. So, you know, it, it's just, you know, the, the amount of styling and um, makeup that we do in, in the salon is just like Saturdays is just on another level. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah. Love that. <clears throat> I'm going to go on a slight tangent for a moment. When Saturday's full and you have a big team, how many chairs do you have? How many stations do you have in the salon? We have to, uh, in the 
the salon. We have 36 chairs, which is totally booked. And um, in the Fitzgerald salon, uh, we did have 15 and we're in uh, mid-renovations and hopefully uh, it will be finished at end of August and we're adding another 12 chairs or so. So we're looking around about 24 to 25 chairs out there. So, yeah, they're big salons, and uh, which is great because, as we all know, there is not a lot of big salons around that can generate that sort of revenue that we do. And, you know, there's just a small, you know, eight chairs or six chairs and, and things like that. So I suppose, you know, mine's just on that extra level of more people. It, it, look, you don't go to circles for a relaxing um, hair day. That's for sure. It's it's definitely a nightclub mood and we've always been like that. We loud, we buzzy, you know, with 30, 32 team members in one salon, you're not going to get a relaxing sort of culture. So let's just face it. So it, it, that's never going to happen. So maybe go to your smallest salon. <laughs> yeah, I love that, that you're, you know, you're embracing who you are and you're stepping into it and it becomes part of the culture and the vibe. Um, yeah, I love the clarity around that and we shouldn't, shy away from it not everybody wants to relax and have silent appointments that's right yeah it <laughs> can exactly. be for somebody else <laughs> yeah exactly right. there's lots of clients to go around so you know people have choices yeah so yeah. your business is growing in the middle of a cost of living crisis why do you think some salons are growing and some are shrinking what are your thoughts yeah well look we we have growth year on year and we, you know, track our growth all the time. And I think we we're on 14.5% growth uh, for this year. Um, and I think because people, salon owners get too stagnant, they get too comfortable, they stop reinvesting in their business, they feel that, you know, that they can't see what else they can do. They, you know, that they don't want to change. And especially older salons, uh, older salon owners, I should say, they're, um, you know, that they, they, they didn't move with the times. And then when we don't move with the times, we get left behind and this, their salon maybe would have been relevant and new and upcoming, you know, 15 years ago. But because they didn't move with the times and start reinvesting in their business and really look at all their pa platforms of what they are spending or you know, w with their marketing plan or if they had a marketing plan, um, they got left behind and now they're, they, they're feeling like, now what do I do? Do you know what I mean? So there is, a, there is a, I really feel that, especially with my shadowing program that I do offer to salon owners, I think people are scared to make changes um, and to thinking, is this going to work? But we all to have to take risks in business and I wouldn't got where I am today if I didn't take a risk and you just have to keep evolving yourself and listen and I always listen to my team you know and obviously my um, business partner in my second salon as well which is really important you, you you need people to drive you and to come up with these new ideas then you're just not stagnant because stagnant it is not going to bring in the revenue anymore, unfortunately. Hey, me again. I'm jumping in here really quickly to say, hey, thanks for joining me here on the podcast. Just one question though. Are you listening to this episode thinking, oh my God, this is me. I need to know more. I need to take action. I can't ignore this anymore and be an ostrich. Well, I have some strategies for you. The Salon Mastery Program will help you develop and implement 100K team strategies designed to lead your team to enjoy a 100K career and install the mindset and the motivation of a 100K stylist or therapist, systems and processes that you might need to master a 100K day so you can build the million dollar salon. I want to invite you to join me for a complimentary million dollar strategy call. We'll discuss your business, your role in your business. Let me see if I can help you grow the team, the business, so you can reach those goals. All you need to do is apply now in the show notes of this episode. We can book a time, have a strategy call. All right, that's enough from me. Let's get back to the episode. 
Yeah, I really love that you brought that up because I think it's easy to, as we get older or have been in business for longer, to be frustrated with new generations, the change, and they want to do it differently, and I don't understand it. And instead, we need to flip to, oh, this is interesting. How can we bring this in? And maybe having a high proportion of young uh, apprentices help that. You know, rather than reject it and go back in my day, we didn't do that. Instead, embracing it and um, yeah. doubling I think, down. I think salon owners, they expect a lot from their team. They Their expectations for their team is a lot, but then they don't do it themselves. So recently, I uh, we put a social media commission that I pay all my team members to put out content out there. And I pay them $150 a week for three posts on their own personal Instagram, like Susie from Circles of Hair, Melissa from Circles of Hair, and we pay them. And they loved the idea of getting the money, but they were maybe too scared to start putting themselves online. And that's when I started my TikTok um, only, you know, eight months ago. And I thought, well, I have to prove to one to my team first that if this old chook can do it, you can do it, you know. And, you know, obviously my TikTok absolutely blew up in such a short, short amount of time and it really gave these guys that confidence and saying, wow, if Charlene can do it, if my boss can do it, I can do it. And I think that's this attitude we have to have as salon owners that you cannot just expect that your team's going to do it. You have to, it starts from the top, let's face it, in whatever we yeah. expect from our team. You know, we can't say you sell retail or you recommend this if you're not doing it. You know, right. like it, 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 it's pretty simple. It's like one plus one equals two. It's not, it's not a magic formula here, mate. It's just like this is how it is. If you're a salon owner, take responsibility. Yeah. No one's going to outperform the person at the top of the pile. That's right. Even though I have the stylist that is way better doing their job than me because, you know, I, I can I, I I actually just run the floor and really help my team to um to to reach their targets and goals. I don't know if you've seen some of my TikToks I talk about how much money my guys take home and I'm very open and transparent with that. And I, I did this to really help and open up the industry's industry's eyes that you know whatever you know I talk about different uh, pathways that you can take anything like that anything to do with salon you know I just put it out there on my TikTok but that at the end of the day you know we really have to embrace what we have and and you know and and show it off on what we do and that's why we have never paid for a paid advertising on Seek or anything like that. We we just have so many rev resumes resumes coming in and saying, I want to work here because we set ourselves up, like I said, to success. We don't wait till we're desperate. You know, we I've got like 10 people that wanting to work at circles. Why? Because all of us put it out there. Until you know, you need to put it out there, even though I don't need anyone, even though I just had a senior resign yesterday. I've got all my seniors are ready to go on that floor and they're already on the floor, but they need to be a little bit busier. So, you know, they'll just all step up and, you know, it, it's sad to see a, a, a wonderful team member leaving, but for my apprentices, they're, they're super happy as well. So, you know, you, but we need to put it out there. We need to show the world, you know, before, you know, when we were both in business, we didn't have social media. We had you know, newspaper ads, we had billboards, we had, had newsletter drops, we had all this other stuff that we spent money on, but we couldn't track the return on investment. Now we can track everything, everything. And that's what I love about it. And I'm a real tracker. I love that. I, I believe also the numbers will always tell us what we need to do next in our business. And if you don't have the numbers, you can't always know what to do. Otherwise, it's gut instinct, and we need your sanity check that yeah. with the numbers. Well, I um, mean, go, the, the, you know, you just cannot run a business when you're just crossing your fingers and you're thinking, all right, uh, am I going to have, you know, five new people coming into the salon today? Well, what what have you done about it? And how much money did you spend on your marketing? And, 
you know, when was the last time you looked at your back end of your website? And when I ask these salon owners, they, they just, they don't even know how to get in the backside of their website. And it, it's a real worry. It really is. Now, Liz, let's go back to your uh, training plan for a moment before we wrap things up, because I'm really keen to know 19 apprentices, how many people on the training team? What does it take to run 19 apprentices and have a success plan? Yeah, well, um, all my uh, seniors rotate. You know, there's a handful of seniors that love training. I will never obviously make some of my seniors um, do training. Um, but we have around about 10 senior stylists that is on our training plan and they rotate every week. And at the, in December, we um, set out a whole training plan that they have in the Slack group by January, knowing what week we're doing training, what, um, what is expected of them, if we're doing colour training, cutting training, hair up training, hair extension training, whatever, and they are all organised for 12 months. So there's no excuses of, I can't get a model. It's like, oh, well, you've had 12 months, darling. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, at, and, and you can just see, I think I, I did another a video uh, not long ago, and I think I had about 11 or 12 apprentices that have come from another salon because they weren't getting enough training. And they left their salon to come to circles because they knew that they were going to be left behind. They were still at the basin. I had this amazing girl. She's been with me now for oh, nearly a year now. And she was in her third year and she was still at the basin, still at the basin. No, and, and, and it was heartbreaking. And the, the thing is, you know, that salon owner should have really pushed her up, started to get her to go on the floor and then start recruiting more people. But, you know, obviously she didn't. And, you know, and this is why a lot of people leave, um, you know, apprentices leave, which is, you know, unusual. Yeah, it's a it's a real shame. It is a real shame. Um, Charlene, what is a quote or a mantra that kind of pulls you and your team together, something that you stand by always? If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. So you wow. always have to be challenged. Um, and I, I really believe that. And, you know, when the guys, you know, find something very difficult to do in the salon, wh whatever it is, it might not be a haircut. It could be just anything, part of life, you know. It, it has to challenge you because otherwise we are just going to be staying where we are. We don't want that. So I think we really need to push ourselves to that next level if you want to get to that level. You know, some people are happy just to potter around and, just get that, you know, normal wage as salon owners. But for me, I was never interested in that. Why would we be salon owners when you can earn a six-figure salary at my salon? Like, seriously, let's go to that next level. So it, it depends on what you want personally out of your business. I love that. Um, I love that quote a lot. What is a, a book or a podcast or someone that you've been following that you think all salon owners should get their hands on, aside from you, of course? <laughs> well, I was just going to say me, but now you really yeah. <laughs> No, um, look, uh, look, I can't even, uh, look, you know, I, I just listen to so many. Uh, it's always to do with hairdressing. I think I've got like 10 on the go. But, look, I, I always, uh, look, I'm a big thing on um, social media. So I find that other people inspire me. Um, and, um, you know, just, just being relevant in, in the industry as well and, you know, reaching out. So, um, yeah, just being active. Yeah, the good old two-way connection, like she connecting and talking with people. Yeah. I love that. Definitely, <laughs> definitely. Hey, well, I really appreciate your time um, talking about the industry. You've got such a depth of knowledge. It's super inspiring. I know people will want to follow you and stalk you. So what are your socials? How can we find you? Okay. So on TikTok, it's Charlene Lee Lee. And I talk everything business and a bit of fun. And my Instagram is Charlene Lee. Um, and Circles of Hair, uh, follow us on Circles of Hair. And we put on more um, relatable hair stuff on there. Um, but I just want to finish off with Apprentices. 
Um, I find we have 19, but I found eight years ago, 10 years ago, I definitely would have had less because now what I would normally take on three apprentices every six months, I have to, with 2024, I have to put on five now with um, what, you know, what our generation is today. And as salon owners, we have to not think about what it was 10, 15 years ago. We are living in their generation right now in 2024. And so be it, we're not going to get the same apprentices of what we had 15 years ago. It's different. Get over it and maybe just add another apprentice because, you know, with sick days, mental health, can't cope, whatever it is, that's how we are. And we have to move with the times. And if we all thinking my apprentice is this, is my apprentice is that, put on two or three and it will all work out. And that's the expectations us as salad owners need to have more open mind because we are living in their generation right now. I love that as your parting thought. I 100% agree. I think we get too fixed in like all my eggs are in this one apprentice and I'm, I've got everything riding on her being qualified in four years time. And then we're so disappointed when it doesn't work out. Like this is just an un unrealistic expectation to have a hit rate of 100%. So what you're saying is it's a hit rate of 20%, 20 to 25%. Uh, what, when I had my salon, it was one in three. I would take on two at a time and the one in three would make it to the end and be, you know. Um, so that totally resonates with me. Like one in five, it just really makes sense. Um, that was super good advice. And yeah. you get it here from Charlene. <laughs> Yes, I think that that's the thing. We really just have to embrace, you know, we are in 2024 and what it was 10 years ago. You know, I've been doing 40 years and I, I could just be going, oh, you know, I, I wouldn't be here and be relevant right now if I was thinking about what happened five years ago. Just, just move on. Move on. I think that's our parting mantra. Move on. Yeah. Appreciate your time, Charlene. No problems. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Charlene. I had seven apprentices at any given time in our Cultivate Training Academy. So, Charlene, I take my hat off to you for having 19. That's incredible. I know too well that you need to hire two, three, maybe even five to get one that goes the long haul with you. And as long as we can get them income generating in those first six months, they pay their own way. You just can't afford to wait four years to get a return. Those days are gone and you can't complain about it because otherwise you just get left behind. So I hope you feel inspired to start or develop an apprenticeship program in your salon and start training and growing the future, not only of your industry, but of your salon. Thanks again, Charlene, for joining me on the Salon Owners Collective Podcast. And if you need help, building a strong training academy so you always have the next up-and-coming recruit. I have the program just for you, the Cultivate Training Program, ready for you to just install into your salon. Reach out, we can chat. All right, till next week, same time, same place on the podcast. Ciao for now.